evening, brothers and sisters. I want to first of all say I'm very, very happy to be here with you on this first uh, Black Christ Conference. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Pierre, all the presenters, and say right off that the, the main thing that thrills me about being in, involved in this kind of program is that I've always looked forward to sharing with African Americans, with people of color in particular. Not that that means it's, it's, it's exclusive to any one group. Um, there's a lot of confusion with regards to the color, the racial origins of Mary, Jesus in general. One of the things that I want to place a lot of great emphasis on today is getting some clarity on the historical origins of the mother of, of, of the, the Mother Mary or the person whom we call the Mother Mary and the baby Jesus. Um, I want to place a lot of emphasis today on principles because we have a tendency to get caught up in, in, in the cultural perspective and forget the principles. Uh, most of us here have studied enough to know that there's a lot lacking with regards to the historical aspects of Christianity and other religions in general. But if we look at the principles, if we look at the principles, we can even get some clarity on what's accurate in each one of the, of the religions. Uh, Sister Myra, who I'm really glad that, that I had a chance to, to catch part of her presentation today, you know. Um, and I, I liked following her because of the, 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 the yin yang balance because you know in the early temples you always had a priest and a priestess priestess priest you never just had a male figure doing it you know as a matter of fact one of the problems with the church today is they seem to 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 forget that you have to have both the yin and yang in order to really put the teachings out there right um what we need to 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 really get into uh, 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 the, the, the primary consideration has to be the principles. And when you stick to principles, then you understand that even though the historical aspects are not correct, the principle. So if, if, if you find a principle, for example, if you find one religion saying that it's where's the only way, and that it was this only begotten son, and you know that doesn't coincide with all the other systems, then you know there's something wrong with that particular religion. Okay? So I want to place a great emphasis on that. I want to provide historical evidence that we know that the Black Madonna, whoever the, 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 the picture was drawn to, to, um, to uh, portray, we know that it was in Africa. This picture they claim is the oldest picture that, that, uh, of the Black Madonna and child. In the 14th century, they want to believe, they say that, uh, that St. Luke painted it. Whoever did it, it's a very old painting. Um, I was sitting one evening in New York in 1982, and our waitress was Polish. And I, at the time, was selling these in, in, uh, in, in New York City. And the waitress stopped at the table. She said, oh, Our Lady of Cheshire right away. When I tried to sell these, these uh, pictures to African Americans and other people here, they didn't know who, who it was. What is that? You know? So this points out the fact that in Poland, and you know the, the present Pope, Poland, okay, this picture is revered in France, in Spain, in Italy, in Montserrat. Okay? The only place, the main place that we have this Caucasian figure of the, the mother and child is here. All right? We, then we have to go into um, what the picture actually represents from a symbolical point of view, all right? Because as, as Sister was saying, one of the major problems we have in, in the church today is we have little or no focus on religious symbolism. There's a language of religious symbolism that you have to know, like you have to know how to read music before you can read a song, before you can play a song. So it's, it's, it's because of this confusion that we have several different interpretations of one scripture in one block of churches. And that's the problem. Whereas you can get 75 musicians 
to play one song who can't speak the same language, and they all will hit the same note. And so what should be happening is each religious teacher, before he or she can be classified as such, should be taught the language of religious symbolism. That is the missing link in the churches today, really, really so. I'm going to give a talk, and I'm going to follow Sister Myra's lead. I'm going to give a talk on Palm Sunday on the, 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 the symbolism of Palm Sunday and Easter. I'm not going to tell you that today, but I'm just going to tell you one part of it, okay? For example, we see people wearing palm on, on Palm Sunday. What's, what are they wearing palm for? If you ask them, they don't even know. Palm is a symbol of victory. And so, because it's from the highest tree that has a crown on it. And so we wear palm on Palm Sunday to commemorate, to celebrate the victory we've had over our animal self. And the rest you'll get on Palm Sunday. But that's an example. So there's a whole language of it. And, and most of the scriptures are written in the language of religious symbolism. And you cannot understand them unless you understand symbolism. And unless you understand what the serpent means, you won't understand what it means in Genesis, in the medical caduceus, you won't understand it in, 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 in the Egyptian headrests. You won't understand it. But if you do, you'll understand the whole meaning of it. So that's what we have to do. Okay? Um, I have been studying since 1960. I went to India in 1968 to see a teacher in the Himalayan mountains who I dreamt of in 64. I came back, set up a school in Harlem, and about two years after I was open, I, I came to, to really understand that if you're going to help African Americans, because I, I was teaching yoga, uh, that you have to go, if you want to get the masses, through Christianity. Now you can go to them by helping them understand it from a deeper level. So I'm not about trying to, even though I know many that we will discuss in terms of the, the, the possibility of, of, of the way the system was transported from, the, from, the, from Egypt, from Krishna, you know, the whole situation, okay? But I also know that if we want to help our folks, African Americans and people of color, we have to help them understand this system from a deeper perspective and show them how they can use it because the main thing are the principles. So if, we, if, so if we adopt those, if we understand those, then we can help folks in a big way. My mom, for example, and my family would not hear anything I had to say about mes metaphysics, uh, 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 esoteric things, until I went to them through Jesus. I performed the funeral one time, or the many I performed on my family growing up in Harlem, and uh, on my family. And um, what happened was, this time I said, okay, rather than being the weird member of the family, I'm gonna go to them through Jesus. <laughs> so I went and I told them about karma, reincarnation, all those, I went through Jesus. They said, oh, it's the greatest funeral you ever preached. I said, but I said the same thing, I just said it through the Bible and through Jesus. And so we can really help our folks a lot. And just as Sister was saying, this is a very crucial period. So rather than get people to change their whole mode, just teach them the principles through that particular mode, okay? Now, Egypt is, we understand, the cradle of where it all started. All of the teachings, whether, whether we believe they came in through Atlantis, you know, Egypt is where it started. It goes back to Egypt, okay? The problem that I have with most Christians is, um, and I have a lot of problems with Christians, especially Christian ministers. Egypt, is, because of the fact that they knocked Egypt, we can understand that Egypt in its fall has problems because younger souls incarnated, and the souls that had Egypt in its heyday were highly event souls. So let's look at Egypt's teaching from that perspective of where the highly advanced souls push, put it into, into place, okay? Which gives us a lot of feedback also on why we are here and what we came to do. You know, wh whatever we say about Christianity, we have to look at karma. We have to understand that if we were duped with the system, it's because we used the system at some time to dupe somebody else and we misused the teachings. So let's thank God that, that our system was brought from Egypt here to America 
presented as another system, but the same basic system, so now we can use it and straighten it out. A problem I have is people saying, oh, let's just throw the whole system on the side, you know, but all these folks are not going to change. So the thing we want to do is show these folks what the true system really is. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, we have found out by studying melanin that melanin is the chemical, the, the, the chief chemical, if you want to call it that, the chief, uh, 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 the original energy in the life process. All right, there can't be no life without melanin. And when there is melanin deficiency, and I'm talking about in the nervous system throughout the whole system, then that's a diseased organism. So if we're talking about the creator taking on the form, common sense would tell us that the creator is not going to take on a form in a diseased organism. That's number one. Number two, in order for the creator, let's, let's, let's look at the creator as being, Jesus as being an incarnation of the solar logos. That every now and then the, the creator takes on the physical form to come down and show us who we are. I was sitting here today, sister, sister, listening to Sister Myra, and I was saying to myself that people are looking all over for God when God is right here. I'm looking at God right here, okay? And so when Myra is teaching or, you're te or anybody is teaching, God is teaching me. So I'm sitting here, so, well, and it's not like it, God right there, right in front of us. Um, and so once we understand that aspect of it, then we get a much clearer perspective on what this teaching actually is, and that in order for God to in incarnate in human form, God has to have a perfect vehicle, a perfect vessel, because the only body that could actually hold that kind of energy would have to be a melanin-laden body. I carry with me, for example, and, and, and they put these stones, these gems. This is called a black tremoline. And the black tremoline is the gem in all of the gem kingdom that carries, that, that has the potential to deflect negative energies. Okay? It deflects it, pushes it off. I wear it because when you shake hands, you pick through the energy up into your palm. And I try to get a lot of beauticians and barbers to wear it because you're handling people's hair all the time. Got you. So, if, if, if we found then that the blacker the vessel is, because, for example, in ancient Africa, the darker you were, the more you were revered. Because blue black, you know what I mean? It used to hurt me when I lived in New Orleans and I see these young, beautiful sisters trying to bleach themselves light. And I said, do you understand, sister, the blessing of being black? So we don't really understand, in essence, what black power is, okay? I'm really, really, really thankful that I've had such wonderful teachers and have been prepared in a way I have. One of my dreams has always been to help folks understand this system. I would sit sometime and cry actual tears, knowing that Christianity is such a beautiful system if it's just taught in the right fashion, okay? All right. So in order for the creator to inc incarnate, it had to be a black form, pitch black form, because of the fact that black absorbs so much energy and radiates it, okay? So, so in order for the creator to come as an avatar and be amongst us and do the healing work that, 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 that the creator did, when he came as Jesus, Horus, Krishna, the principle is what matters. We have a tendency to get so caught up in the cultural aspects of it, we forget the other aspect of it. So after I know about Jesus being in a black body, well, what do I do with that? And the fo many, many folks just stop there. The most important part of it is to understand how that relates to me as a soul, spirit in a black body at this point. You hear me? Okay? You there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so our job, those of us who are here, those of us who are getting a fuller picture of it, our job is to now go into our community and our family and help the people in our circle understand these teachings from a, a perspective that won't kick over all their furniture, but will show them how they can use the system. See, I, I really have a problem with, with, with brothers and sisters who have gotten this knowledge. Now they want to go tell somebody, 
Well, you, you, you heard about Horus and Osiris and Isis, so that's all God. No, no. Show me how to use this in a proper perspective. I stopped a brother on the subway one day who was a member of an Islamic group that moved from New York, Brooklyn, to here. And um, they had this pamphlet. They were showing people the, the fallacy of Christmas and Easter. I said, brother, why, why, don't you show, why don't you write some books on how to use it correctly rather than just scratching it all off as being up, obsolete? So that's what we need to do. We need to understand that knowledge brings responsibility. You have to know how much to give to people and how to give it to them so you don't interfere with their spiritual walk. Okay? So now we have Jesus, the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception reminds us or represents for us. It lets us know that in order for us to give birth to the Christ seed within ourselves, we have to have the, an immaculate conception. The woman, in Bible, in scriptures, the woman represents the feminine, the soul, the vehicle through which the masculine manifests itself, okay? And so it, the first thing I have to do is that I have to immaculatize, clean my soul, all right? So wherever you see in scriptures, the feminine, Mary, okay, or the other women in scripture, whether it's Eve or Mary or whatever, it represents the, the feminine, intuitive, emotional side. And so this lets me know right here that what I have to do is first immaculatize. Th that's how this, this relates to me. See, originally in the Catholic Church, which of course fell also, but originally in the Catholic Church, or let me say in the esoteric aspects, Every, every religion has an esoteric aspect, an exoteric. The esoteric relates to the inner, deeper, higher teachings that's just reserved for those people who are at that level of development. The exoteric is singing songs, burning incense, you know, giving alms. That's the, ex, the outer. Jesus says that he gave two teachings, one to the masses and one to his disciples. Okay? So the esoteric interpretation of it lets you know that people, they should use icons in the Catholic Church not to pray to them. When you have an ultimate statue, you're not praying to, to the statues. The statues represent what your ultimate objective is. So this reminds me, for example, that what I have to do to, to, to give birth to my inner divinity is to purify my soul. You got it? And I also have to the hand here, the right hand, the power hand lets me know that it has to be through, love has to be, has to happen. And we need to understand also the whole process of love and that love is not an emotion, it's the energy, you know, and if we understand how to use that love energy, we can harmonize ourselves, we can also harmonize our enemies. I don't have to like my enemy, but I can love my enemy if I understand what the energy represents. Okay, so let's just know that love is the major thing I need to immaculatize, to, to purify my soul, okay? If I can take a moment, if it's okay with you, I'm going to talk a little about what love is, okay? Black power, we said so much earlier about black power. At the center of the universe, center of everything, we have this black energy, this black cohesive bonding energy that draws everything into a cohesive whole, draws, so, draws otherwise incompatible energies into a tight bond, so tight that if the atom is split, we have the atomic explosion. That's black power. That's what the black fist really represents, black power, okay? That we have that ability, okay? What we're supposed to be doing with that ability is we're supposed to be using that to draw the universe together, to draw our community together, to draw those people who we consider our enemies to help them become harmonious beings within themselves. Then they won't be so disruptive. Doesn't mean we have to like them, but we have to exert this energy and help them to harmonize themselves, okay? People say to me, well, you know, brother, that's too idealistic and we cannot focus on loving Caucasians. We have to get our own self together. But you see, at the rate the Caucasian is going, 
if we don't harmonize him, we won't have a chance to get ourselves together because he's destroying the planet that we are coexist, trying to coexist on, okay? Um, right as we speak, there's somebody sitting with their hand on the bomb in case they think they should push it off and, and blow it, everything up. So we have to take that on as a responsibility. So the love, love energy says, first thing we have to do is get rid of all this hate, all this uh, resentment, okay, at the center of our being. That's the first law, harmony. So what happens is once we, this energy here at the center of the atom is holding everything together, all right, it then is responsible for the community. It commands unity. It holds everything into its grasp. Now, that has to, why is that not working? That's not working in the Christian world because we don't understand how to activate, how to activate our inner, our heart chakra, our heart center. We have learned that, and, and we, we, we'll talk about that today. That's the mission we make. We go to church every Sunday. We talk Jesus, you know, to us, you blue, we blew in the face. But we, just, we really don't understand the inner dimensions of that teaching, okay? So once that happens, okay, and we actually activate our heart center, then we're able to bring in this higher spiritual energy. It's, it's, it's suicidal for African Americans or people of color not to be spiritual because our melanin makes us super sensitive. We draw everything to us. When you hear the black of the bird is sweet and juice, it's because black is all absorptive. So we absorb the essence of everything. That's why we have so many nervous breakdowns, so much stress, so much high blood pressure, uh, uh, hypertension, all that because we're psychic sponges, you see? So we don't have a choice, life or death, but we have to begin to something spiritual. We have to begin to treat this instrument as, as, as the spiritual organism that it really is, okay? In order for us to understand a, um, a religion, we have to understand it on three levels. On the cosmic level, the historical level, and the mystical level. The cosmic level, which Sister Meyer was, was, was talking to us about also, deals with how the, relationship, how the religion relates to cosmic truth, laws, and principles. The historical level talks about how that religion relates to the, the manifestation of God in the flesh and the records in the, that, that he or she left, you know, during that particular period. The mystical relates to the, 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 that, that spiritual essence within us and how we can manifest that, how we get into our inner self. And that's why the Christ, Christ, scriptures say Christ in you is your hope of glory, manifesting our inner, our inner divinity, you see? If we stick just to principles, we'll understand that Christianity is a science of divinity, a solar-based science of divinity. You know, it's, some, it's, it's somewhat lazy for a person just to leave something rather than figure out how to straighten it out. It's very easy for us to say, later for Christianity, I'm going to just go be this. But from, from my perspective, it's, it's our job to straighten the, sy the, the system out. Because of the fact that our community, we, 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 I, I don't think we're going to be anything else. We'll either be dumb, backwards, ignorant Christians, or we'll be enlightened. Okay, um, the beautiful thing about being in this melanin-laden body is that we have the potential to do some awesome things that we'll, we, we don't yet still don't have any idea of. The, um, the essence of Christianity is what? The essence is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Which means that, what, what does the word Christ mean? The word Christ is from the Greek Christos. And Christos means anointed. And so if we understand the sun as being a living, organic, intelligent being, and if we understand that this human form is an electromagnetic organism, then we understand that that Christianity in its essence is a system that shows us how to 
become anointed by the highest potencies of solar energy and open all our centers, all our spiritual centers. The halo is just not something that's make-believe. The halo is, 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 is a real light that goes through, comes into a person's system and, you know, when that person is cleansed, when that person has prepared themselves for this anointment, you see? It really hurts me when I, I look at, I look at evangelists on TV at least four or five times a week. It inspires me. It hurts to watch that foolishness. But it inspires me to do what we're doing here today because it's desperately needed because it's, it's, it's gone beyond. It never was a time for all the emotionalism, but it's gone to a point where we have to begin to understand this as a science and what it means to us and how understanding it and practicing it would uh, make our communities paradise, okay? One of the pioneering souls who probably taught more Christian principles than most Christian ministers was Elijah Muhammad. Because he taught that each person is a God, that each one of us is a micro-God, not a bum, not a prostitute, not a criminal, you know, not a sinner, but a sleeping God, a sleeping goddess. Doesn't mean we don't sin, but that's not our identity. We're not sinners. It's like the teacher said, every saint has a past, every sinner has a future, okay? So, if we understand that Christianity is a solar-based science of, of divinity, then we, we understand that we as people of color have a particularly important role in, in manifesting it. So it's not accidental, you see. The thing I also try to tell people is that the Bible is the book of principles. Stop trying to make it a history book. When you have a book that, if I bring you a book and I say to you, um, this book I want you to base your life on, you say, okay, brother. First thing you want to know, though, is where's the bibliography? Who wrote this book? What's the references? Okay. The Bible has no bibliography. All, all we have is Mark, John, Matthew, and Luke. And they don't have no, no, no history as far as we know. I'm not knocking. I'm just saying that history, we need to use it as a book of principles. It's excellent for that. It can show us how we can get to the highest spiritual level. But as soon as we start getting into using it as a history book, we run into problems, okay? And so that's the thing. Then, then, we, then we need to understand, thank you, sister, also that, 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 that religions are, this picture here we're talking about, this picture is giving us universal principles that are applicable to every religion. The thing that I love about Christianity as a science, okay, is that it is a universal system applicable to anyone on any spiritual path. Whether I'm a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Yoruba, a Taoist, a shaman, whatever it is, I have to go the same path. I have to immaculate, immaculate my soul, okay? When I, and I have to do it through opening my heart chakra because that's my sun center. I have to open my sun center in order to harmonize the other aspects of me. One problem we have, serious, serious problem, we need to begin to understand spiritual laws and principles. How many people in here believe that what goes around comes around? Okay, now remember you say that. How many people believe that what goes around comes around all the time? Huh? All the time. All the time. All the time? Okay. If, if, if that's true, then the African Holocaust, the Indian Holocaust, the Jewish Holocaust were workings of the same law, okay? We're quick to say that September 11th, and I heard somebody say when Kennedy got shot, the chicken came home to roost. But we don't really want to understand that what happened to us was also chickens coming home to roost. And then we can learn from that. Somebody asked Mark Twain what were the two most famous words in the English language. He said, not guilty. 
Everybody wants to be a victim. You know, the words that irritated me the most about the September 11 thing was innocent victims, innocent victims. You see? So, these universal laws and principles are applicable. So it lets us know that when I, listen to this carefully, I'm, I, I, I want to go from the conception of the idea to the ascension in Christianity to show the universality of it. When I decide I am going to be a Muslim, a Christian, a Yoruba, whatever, that is the birth of that ideal within me. And the birth of that ideal with me, within me then is represented by the sign of Virgo, okay? The version, okay? Virgo, all right? Now, that ideal is balanced in Libra. That ideal is, it becomes a real powerful desire in Scorpio. And then in Sagittarius, I get a full perception. And Christmas time, that ideal is born. Okay? So the immaculate conception is when anybody decides, when anybody's soul is pure enough, don't be, not all pure, but pure enough for them to embrace the spiritual ideal. That's the one phase of the matter, that's, that's when the, the, uh, uh, the pregnancy takes place, okay? Then, at Christmas time, it represents the birth of that ideal. I'm going to do that. I'm going to really be a Christian. I'm going to do my best to do that, okay? And then, that ideal is born in a stable, in this animal form, amongst these animal desires, okay? And then I start to tell my friends, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm join this church. And then the Herod mentality starts. Well, you stupid. Let's kill that idea. You're not going to, you know, you, you, I'm smoking joints with you all the time. You ain't going to be nothing but you. But you just another bag you're getting into. That's the Herod mentality, okay? And, but I stick it in. And then I try to find a place around my friends and my associates in terms of what I want to be about. I can't find a room at the inn because I get rejected. That happens in any spiritual prayer that I want. And then I also, then we run into the Judas mentality. Everybody has a Judas factor. And so we find that the Judas factor is your chief feature, your chief, our chief negative hang-up that sells us out over and over again, that justifies, that makes us useful, that finds fault, that sells us out all the time, okay? Then we, okay, then, when we find out what that chief feature is, it self-destructs. That's the suicide of it. And then our false self is crucified. And then our real self comes out, evolves. That's every religion. That's every spiritual path. That's how, that's how the system is supposed to be taught. So a Christian minister should be telling people, you are a God in the making. That Jesus is not an example. He's not an exception. He's an example. That God took on a physical form to show you and I, this is who you are. This is what this physical form is capable of, of achieving. You're God. One of your teardrops, the power in one teardrop can blow up a 14-story building. So while we're sitting there moaning, look at that sleeping God. The gods have to be laughing at us. Look at sleeping God, crying because they think they're going to get dispossessed. Look at them. Okay? And all this God needs is to just wake up to who they are. So it's not a question of us. You see, think of the fact that in the orange seed, the orange seed has a picture of a perfect orange. All it has to do is unfold. So we're already perfect. We just have to unfold. Or think of a lamp with four covers over it. Just take the covers off, and the lamp is there already. So, all we have, so our biggest problem is we have spiritual amnesia. We have forgotten who we are. That's it. That's the only problem. Okay? So if I say, if you say to somebody, I am God, it's true. What was the name of God in the, in the Old Testament? I am that I am. When somebody asks you, well, what's, your, what, what, what's your name? What, 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 what do you say? I am such and such a person. So you declare, we're, we're declaring our divinity every day. We just haven't accepted it yet. 
Because we say in the church, it's blasphemous for me to say that. Jesus said it. Before Abraham was, I am. I am. Okay? Christ in us. So the Christ picture, so what they're saying, in each one of us there's this perfect spiritual being. Just has to unfold. And Christianity being the science that it is, is letting us know that whatever system you're in, the Christian minister should be teaching everybody, go to some religion. Whatever one you want to go to, just go. In, in other words, you have a law. You have to send your child to school. The universal law is that you have to go get on some spiritual path and manifest your higher self, whatever it is. It may be that you were Muslim in your past lifetime. You may have been a, a, a Buddhist, whatever it was. Go for whatever path attracts you. But be that, OK? Are we on the right path? Mm -hmm. OK? All right. We're now moving through 